It has tons of products and it would be foolish to try to scroll through them on uh, a mobile device. So instead, maybe you just provide some very generic information and just direct them somewhere else. Can anyone think of another example? I, I would want to lean towards uh, things like entertainment. Uh, I'll say Vegas off the top of my head because, okay. um, for example, a nightclub site, it is, I would think, for the mobile device, it would be short and sweet where we are and what's the special du jour. Du jour and okay. All right. That definitely makes a, 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 um, sense, that example. In other words, can maybe you make a more general observation? That's a great specific example. Can you generalize that a little bit? Um, What's different about the desktop user of that casino site than a mobile user? I would think a mobile user is essentially planning things on the spur of the moment, so they're, they're not all. Right. Yeah. All right. Want to add to that? In a nutshell, they have different goals. They have radically different goals. All right. Um, so you visit a a mobile casino website. Maybe your goal is, gee, you know, I've had a few drinks. I can't remember where the hotel is. So let's look it up so I could ask for directions. Or maybe you know, gee. Here's these restaurants around here. What, what has the best special today or something like that? You're liable to have some very specific goals due to the fact that you're using a mobile device. Due to the fact that you're using a mobile device, you're on the go. All right? And you're looking stuff up. You're probably not looking for the entire bank of information about that organization. You're just zeroing in on that. Another way to say it is that users have different goals. The other thing is simply, again, like you mentioned before, with a company that has a, a bunch of products, just the physical limitations. All right? I'll give you an example. And oh, no, I won't. Shoot, I didn't bring my phone. All right? Well, let's see if, if yield emulator works. Now, by all means, great. Now the emulator's not working. Not showing what I wanted to. Our very own Lorraine CCC.edu. If you have an Android phone, um, I know on my phone it works this way. Um, I would assume on different mobile devices. Um, if you pull it up on a mobile device, you get just a very neat menu of maybe 10 things. If you pull it up on a desktop, you get 30 million things just on home page. All right, and then each of those links to 30 million more, so you got a lot of stuff on there. Now, I'm not going to uh, defend or, or pick on Elsie's website, but one thing they definitely did right, did, did you pull, were you able to pull it up? Yeah, I do not like it at all. What, but do you have, you, you don't have a full website. Okay, yeah, if you can show that, again, it's not, not necessarily beautiful. No. But, but, at the very least, they've cut down the content, okay. all right? They've cut down the content. That's the one thing that they did right. In other words, they made the pages look radically different because they know that people accessing it, the site via the mobile is going to have different goals. In other words, if you're plotting out 
like what degree program you want to take. You're probably not doing that on your phone. All right? Uh, what are you doing on the phone? Maybe looking someone's phone number up. All right? Because you got to call your professor to say you're going to miss a class. Maybe you're looking to see if, if the school's closed because of bad weather, you know, when, when winter rolls around in a, in a week or two, all right? Uh, you're looking for some very specific things because you're on the goal. You're, you're, or you're on the goal. You're on the go, all right? And therefore, your goals are different than someone that's sitting at a desktop visiting the site. So, for these reasons, and just the fact that it can just be too hard to make an adaptive or responsive site that achieves this. You say, yeah, we're going to just develop a second site. That doesn't mean that the adaptive stuff goes out the window. All right? Um, portions of the site can be one, you know, portions of the site can be adaptive. In addition, uh, we're going to talk about uh, user agent detection. Sometimes that goes wrong. All right, sometimes that doesn't work. Sometimes a particular um, device misidentifies itself, in which case you don't get directed the right place. All right? Sometimes you may be on the mobile version of the site, and you do want to look up something that's on the full site. All right? So you're still going to do our best with that responsive stuff, but we're also going to give another option of saying, hey, we're recognizing that in some situations, it's better just to say, well, I'm going to make two different sites. All right? Now, how do you achieve that? All right? That'll be our topic that we'll get into next week. Um, I hope by then the, the problems that I'm having with our web server here are straightened out so that we can start using that web server for our stuff. And... Um, That'll make a lot of things. That'll make testing and, and a lot of things go uh, a lot more smoothly. Um, but essentially, how do you make two uh, uh, si uh, sites? You use server-side scripting to redirect, to be a traffic cop. Your web page has a thing that when someone accesses it, it looks at what it knows about the user agent and sends you this way or sends you that way. Yes? I totally forgot. Which uh, server-side script language did we learn? In which class? Um, with the Java. I think it was with the Java. With the JavaScript? That's, uh, that's PHP. That's PHP. Yeah. So we're going to be doing some PHP examples. If you've not done PHP, don't worry. We're not dwelling on PHP. But what we're going to do is we're going to do a couple things. We're going to learn enough about PHP to learn how to redirect someone. How to say, you go there, you go there. The second thing we're going to learn is we're going to learn enough about PHP to learn how we can reuse content on a website. All right? We've, we've done things in, in, in classes where we've taken our CSS and put it in an external file. All right? So that way we can apply that on many different, on many different pages. Right? Let's say we have a little a footer on the bottom of our page that's HTML that says copyright Zellers Incorporated 2012, call 440-366-4796 for more information. Let's say I want that to appear on every page. Well, with just plain old HTML, we haven't really learned a way to do that, right? You'd have to put that code on every single page. With PHP, we have the advantage of being able to take that code, putting it in an external file, just like we did with CSS, and then every page simply points to that file. So if my phone number changes, I change it one place, the mobile site, the full version of the site, and every page gets updated all at the same time. So we'll learn enough of that. We'll learn enough PHP so you sort of get the idea of that. Again, this isn't strictly speaking a PHP class, but we'll learn enough about that. So where we'll pick up next time is we'll talk about PHP and server-side scripting, knock on whatever this is. The server will be up by then, so I'll be able to demonstrate some things, uh, and, and we'll go from there. All right. That's all I had for today. Um, see you all later. Um, I, I know the, the, the week three folder talked about adding uh, another page. I don't know if you wanted to elaborate on that, or I'm trying to think of the exact. Uh, I think it's just the same stuff, just add more information, right? Yeah. It's
it, it's it's uh, another page on a different topic. Oh, okay. uh, I think. Oh, it's uh, mobile websites versus apps. Mm -hmm. 